Welcome back to CNN 10. From the CNN Center in Atlanta, I'm Carl Azus. We're getting you caught up today on something that's caused catastrophic damage on parts of California, wildfires. Firefighters are currently battling at least 10 of them across the state. That includes the Mendocino Complex Fire, the largest wildfire in California's history. Wildfires are usually named for the location or landmark near where they start. And the California Department of Forestry and Fire Protection says the Mendocino Complex Fire, which started on July 27th, could take until September to get contained. That doesn't mean it'll be out by then, but that it's likely to be cut off, prevented from spreading farther. This fire alone has burned more than 302,000 acres in Northern California. In area, it's larger than the city of Los Angeles, and it's not the only one. The Car Fire is another blaze that's scorching the northern part of the state. Parts of Yosemite National Park in central California have been shut down by the Ferguson Fire. And the Holy Fire, which started at Holy Jim Canyon last week, has forced evacuations in southern California. These disasters are stretching across the state. Officials don't know yet what caused all of them. Some have been blamed on arson. What is known is that tens of thousands of people have had to flee their homes. Several school districts have had to cancel classes and dry conditions and hot temperatures have combined forces to fuel the flames. Wildfires happen every year. This is nothing new. But what is new and very troubling is the fact that fire season is lasting longer and burning more acres. The Forest Service even estimates that fire seasons are now 78 days longer on average than they were back in 1970. The U.S. burns twice as many acres as it did three decades ago. And Forest Service scientists believe the acreage burned may double again by mid-century. This is a devastating trend and many factors have come together to create a perfect storm. One, more and more people have moved out west and houses are being built in fire hazard zones. I didn't realize how much my, my home means to me. Engineering has allowed for people to build in beautiful and more remote wildfire prone areas. And people have added more vegetation, better known as fuel, too close to their homes. I don't know, I don't know what I'm gonna do right now. <laughs> I can't think right because everything is burned down to the ground. Two, the wildfires are creating their own weather, making them more erratic, explosive, and more difficult to predict. For example, the car fire in July of 2018 had such intense heat inside those flames that it created pyrocumulus clouds. These look and act just like thunderstorms, producing lightning and powerful winds in different directions, not only spreading the fire to additional locations, but also triggering brand new fires. Another factor, California had a lot of rain last year. That caused what some called a super bloom of vegetation, which in turn could help wildfires spread. There's some debate about whether climate change plays a part in this. Many scientists suspect it does. And Michael Moeller, a spokesman for the California Department of Forestry and Fire Protection, blames climate change for the current wildfires. He says there's no other way to explain the explosive fuel conditions that come with increased winds and higher temperatures. U.S. Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke says the wildfires have nothing to do with climate change, but instead with forest management, that California should do more to get rid of the dead and dying trees from the state's forests before they become wildfire fuel. Regardless of the causes, if blazes like these continue in the years ahead, fire officials say they'll cost California billions of dollars more to deal with. 10 Second Trivia where would you find the canthus, the glabella, and the philtrum? Are these parts of the face, the foot, the moon, or the sea? The canthus is at the corners of your eyes, the glabella is between your eyebrows, and the philtrum's on your upper lip. You know your picture is being taken. You're standing in front of a camera. There's nothing subversive about this. 
and we're only comparing you against your passport photo. And that's the photo you've already given the government for travel. The career that Luke Mickelson built for himself, and eventually for thousands of kids across America, started with a single bunk bed in the town where he lived. That led him to found a nonprofit organization called Sleep in Heavenly Peace, and that turned into dozens of chapters all across the country dedicated to the same thing, giving kids a place to lay their heads at night. Twin Falls is a very small town community made up of a lot of farming and agriculture. I grew up here. I'm just a farm kid from Idaho. What I didn't know was there's kids next door who are struggling. When I was a youth group leader in my church, we discovered there was a family in need where they had kids sleeping on the floor. So we built this bunk bed and delivered it to them. These bottoms are tops. <laughs> It was such an eye-opener to me. I thought, you know what? There's no kid that's gonna sleep on the floor in my town if I had anything to do with it. Mattresses, sheets, safety reels, side reels. These kids that we serve, they come to us from all walks of life. People trying to get back on their feet. Usually finding shelter, food for the kids are priority one. Beds are uh, just a luxury for some of these families. All right. Hello, can you show me where your bunk beds are gonna go? Yeah. All right, let's go. I had some life changes and became a single mom of five. We just kind of had to start all over again. I didn't have nothing. They'd crash on the couch or crash on the floor. It's been tough. Where do you guys want your bed in here? You want it right here? I think we want it over here. When we deliver a bed, you walk in and these kids are just so excited. Here we go, guys. We make sure that they understand that this is your bed. Since 2012, we delivered over 1,500 bunk beds. Right there is good. Or help 3,000 kids get off the floor. Come on in. Welcome. The way we build bunk beds is by getting the community involved through what we call build days. Wow, good vermin. We actually teach these volunteers how to build beds. They jump in and four hours later, dusty, sweaty. They got smiles on their face because they just built 40 beds. All right, let her rip. When I stumbled upon oh, this I'm need, not. I had a yeah. lot of good things happening in my professional career. I was making a six-figure salary, but I fell into this need that I discovered wasn't being fulfilled by anybody. I quit my job because I wanted to do this full-time. Before it was kids on mattresses on the floor and in bed with mom, and now they all have their own beds. You want real joy. Stop looking at yourself and see how you can help someone else. These bunk beds won't break, I promise you. It doesn't matter what nationality, creed, race, religion, we don't care. We're humans helping humans. And these are little humans, and they need our help. Sleep in heavenly peace, okay? Yep. All right, Bye. we'll see ya. Bye-bye. For today's 10 out of 10 segment, what goes zero to 60 miles per hour in 1.5 seconds? You do. Or at least you can if you're willing to shell out $167 to become a human catapult. It's set up over Nevis Valley, New Zealand. It's part catapult, part bungee jump, part cheating death. And thrill seekers are propelled about 500 feet with each launch. You can't just walk up and take off though. You have to sign up in Queenstown and then take a bus. So you get plenty of time to reconsider, take a slingshot at something less risky, drive a bun jeep to somewhere safer, or catapult the plug and the idea altogether. You don't want to get roped into a thrill like that. Failing to harness your fear could leave you hanging by a string, y'all. I'm Carlos Zeus, and we hope you'll bounce back for more CNN 10 tomorrow.